Thanks for coming out yesterday. Um, really appreciate it. Um, day before a holiday here in the States. Um, and uh, we had a good turnout of seven tables. I had tried to convince Maureen we shouldn't hold the tournament because no one would be there. And uh, as always, Maureen was correct. Um, and we had a good, a good uh, turnout. Um, love to see more. We were up to eight tables the week before that, so I'm hoping we're building this to the point where it becomes something that's viable to keep doing. Um, let's start with board three, which I found fascinating. Let's, let's first, let's play it with robots, and I think this is a good auction. I think this is the correct auction for east-west, um, and technically correct for south. With 13 points, I'm going to open a club. One spade by my partner, and of course, one no trump showing a balance, 12 to 14. And it's left there. Now, on this hand, what will happen is that uh, whatever West leads here, um, they will eventually find the diamond switch. Right? They've got to give away too much. I have to guess the ace and queen of spades, and you've got to give away the king of clubs to set up three club tricks. Eventually, East West will find the diamond switch, and I get hammered, right? Down two for a negative 100. Now remember that, that's east-west going positive for plus 100. Now, in our game yesterday, in our game yesterday, that was not a good score because east-west is making three diamonds all over the place. I think four times north-south allows three diamonds to make. It doesn't make. Let's go back and bid it again. This time I'll be east. Now what happens is East has this 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 point hand, and they have a 6 card diamond suit. There are three reasons to overcall. One, to be annoying. And sure, bidding two diamonds here could be annoying. Um, two, if you want to lead. But you don't necessarily want a diamond lead. The opening, the opening hand is to your left, and it could be sitting there with the ace of diamonds, right? And your king of diamonds is just swallowed up, and that's the end of the diamond suit. Um, so you don't want a diamond lead. And, and third, you think it's your contract. And, and there, I think you just haven't really evaluated your hand well. Yes, you have the ace and a side suit. That's fabulous, right? But then you have these two queens that are sitting in, in, a, two, in a doubleton and a tripleton. And these points are just not worth an overcall. But let's go ahead and do it. Um, if east-west get in and do this, then south should make a a, dub, a support double. All right. This is uh, this is a uh, an aid that was invented by Eric Rodwell, and you can find it in his first book of bidding topics. But one spade is ambiguous, and that's me. That's my word. It's an ambiguous major. Um, it's patented. It's copyrighted and uh, protected by um, armed guards. So when you use it, you have to give me credit. Um, ambiguous major, it could for, promises only four plus spades, could be all the rest of the spades. It could be uh, five, six points, or it could be all the rest of the points in the deck, right? So it starts us on the road to finding a major fit, but it's rather ambiguous. And South, if he has four spades, can support easily. The question is, what if he has three and North has five? Can we find a three-five fit? with the ambiguous major. And that's where the support double comes in. And I recommend you learn them. If I remember, I will try to find the link to my um, video, sorry, my video um, on support doubles. But I, it, it's, incred it's, it's one of the most useful gadgets you can ever learn. But what'll happen is he'll get the support double. We find out North has no interest in playing at the three level. And West um, actually has pr probably three diamonds or so. Um, and has support for us and has a little bit of points. So looking, you know, okay, we bought this contract. Now let's go back to South. East-West has come in with this diamond overcall and they are vulnerable, right? We're more than happy to let them play. Down one is, um, is a negative 100. If we can just set them one, it's a negative 100 plus 100 for us, right? Plus 100 for us. And as we saw right at the start of this video, if we had, got, had bought this thing and won no trump, we were getting a negative 100, right? So there's a turn of fortune here that we can only take advantage of if we set this diamond contract. Okay, we've got to set this diamond contract. I love three diamonds, uh, three, three of minors in, in match play because they often score very well, right? So this is a situation where East-West is hoping to capitalize on a rather awful um, overcall and uh, that everybody apparently did, and, um, and we need to prevent that. So, 
some ideas that you need to think about as a defender. Okay? We need to count our points. We need to figure out how many points our partner has. We should figure out the distribution of the suits. It wasn't nearly as hard as you think. Um, we need to think about how declarer might be trying to play this hand. We need to think about what tricks can we get, what tricks our partner can have. Right? So um, we should be thinking about, do we have, does East have uh, fast losers or slow losers you know, in his hand? All sorts of things, right? Um, it's, defense is really, really hard. And because of that, it's the thing you need to do, the thing you need to work on more than anything else is your card play and your defensive play. And that means thinking about where the cards are it doesn't necessarily mean learning how to signal. Okay? Um, I'm playing with a robot. We are going to do no signaling whatsoever. Okay. So, anyways, what am I going to start with here? Um, seems as though East probably has six diamonds and West is supported. I would guess it's a 6 3 2 2 fit. Um, my partner has spades. I would love them to be five spades, right? That'd be 5 3. And then when we see West, we can actually figure out maybe what the distribution is in those suits. Um, and if we know the spades and we know the diamonds, then we're going to have a pretty good guess at what the distribution is in the other two suits. So I'm going to start with the club. I'm going to try to set up a club trick right away if I have it. All right. So let's look now. So my partner plays a four and we see the ace of clubs. So what does that mean in term of, terms of how many points are remaining for East? Well, we had eight, nine here, right? And he made this overcall. Should have 12, 11, 12, right? Except um, at a minimum. Um, so that's 20 points or so. And, and I had 13 and my partner managed to bid. So it looks very much like the deck is split about 20, 20. Yeah, it's a split deck. Um, we have seen probably, we've seen four with the king of clubs of East points. Now we're going to find out if it was a six card diamond suit. And my partner shows up with the queen of diamonds. Right? So now we have seen the ace of clubs and the king of diamonds at seven of, right, of their maybe 12 points. So we've seen most of their points. Where else can their points be? Well, they could have the jack of clubs um, and um, they could have the queen of hearts. Right? That's not quite enough points to make it, so we know he has some points in spades. Um, let's see what he does next. So he leads a club. So we've seen two clubs now, and this is an interesting lead. It, it, would he really be trying to set up the jack of clubs, a potential point, by leading away from it here when he has the eight there? No. Right. So I'm convinced this is a doubleton immediately. He is trying to void that suit out. Um, and, uh, and, and uh, I'm not really sure how he's going to try to make this hand. I mean, he's got six diamonds and maybe he wants some roughs, but all those diamonds are roughs. They're all good right now. Um, but, so he can't, um, the queen of hearts, if he has the queen of hearts, he can't really lead away from that. Um, he's in trouble. Um, so if I give him, now, now I want to count the distribution. Six diamonds, if I give him six diamonds, which seems clear after he switches away from the diamonds here. He doesn't pull the last one. Um, six diamonds. If the spades are indeed five, three, three, two, right? Two spades. And when we play defense, we make these assumptions and we make assumptions that help us. I like, if I can know six diamonds, two spades, that's eight points in the pointy suits, right? Spades and diamonds come to points. In the point, in the pointy suits, that leaves five cards in the minors, right? And if this is the, the his doubleton that he had started with, oh, what's that, a six, right? I don't think he has any more clubs. That leaves him three hearts, right? So I know if I make this assumption right now, right, three hearts, two clubs, six diamonds, two spades, then I can start seeing a way to beat this. Um, I'll take it low. And indeed, he doesn't have the jack of clubs, and now I'm convinced absolutely that East is uh, two clubs. Um, I get a lead from my very dutiful partner who didn't need a signal or anything right, to know lead a heart. Right? And now I've got to think about the fact that if East has three hearts, um, they're not going anywhere right now. 
right? They're not going anywhere right now. So I can hold on to those two ace, the ace king, and that's three and four. Those are my third and fourth tricks. My clubs are not any good, right? Because they'll just rough those. And I have to think about my partner's spade bit. Now, I think East has two spades, um, and I think that one of them is an honor. And I'm really praying that it's not the king of spades. Right? Because if he's got ace king and only doubletons there, then he's, he, I think he's going to make this contract. So what I'm hoping is my partner has king. I want to get to it now before there's any chance to get rid of losers. Right? And he does have it. And now I can take my heart here. And what do I do? I cash the ace or play the queen? Well, I am totally convinced that that was a doubleton club. It made no sense otherwise to leave that club. So I cash out my ace. And they are down one. So by East bidding here against a good defense, right? they just went from plus 100 by setting one no trump to negative 100 because they made a bad overcall when they're vulnerable. Now, of course, this only matters if you pull off a good defense. So work on your defense. So let's go to board five where I consider making an overcall. Um, I've got uh, only eight points, but as we discussed in a prior board, there are three reasons to overcall. To be annoying, to get a lead, or if you think it might be your contract. Here, a one spade over a club is obviously annoying. We, that means if there's got a diamond or a heart fit, it'll make it a little harder for them to find it. I don't really care if I get a lead, but, unless there are no Trump, but, um, there's a chance this is our contract, right? I have, I have a 5521 five, uh, with a fabulous club suit sitting behind the hand that opened a club, right? So this could be our hand uh, at, in a part score. So I want to get in just to let our part, my partner know I got five, and maybe it allows us to find a low-level spade contract. And south doubles showing the hearts, maybe diamonds. Uh, West shows us uh, good support, like 10 plus in clubs. Uh, I can just bail out here at two spades. Right? And uh, South bids clubs. West obviously has something, and now the hand starts to get sort of interesting. He's got probably more points than I suspected. I would guess now that we have, he's probably got 12, 13 points, I would hope. Um, he's got a two-suited hand, as do I. His shortage is in what suit? Well, obvious, his shortage is in clubs, because they're bidding him. Um, he could have, maybe might be void, most one. Um, I have a shortage in his suit. And in the back of my mind, I start thinking already about the important technique that's lying in here, which is a cross rough. Defenders should be thinking of it, too, because if a cross rough is coming, beat a trump. Um, so I'm thinking it's a cross rough. Um, I think three spades is my correct bid, but for only for dramatic effect. I think three spades is fine. Um, I'll go to four because it'll get us a double and a big score. Okay? So three spades is correct, and you should just be playing for one extra. Um, I went to four, got doubled, and now I'm getting a lot extra uh, if I can make it. So um, we had one pair making four. And that's all, right? So even if you were just making three spades plus one top board, right? that's all you need for match points. So three spades plus one should be the real contract. I feel bad for leading you astray. That was dramatic effect only. Do not do that at home. Okay? So my thoughts on the hand bore out, right? Which is he has diamonds. Unfortunately, he has the ace of diamonds. I have clubs, and he's short there. He has six 12 points, right, which is what I expected. He came up with four spades, even better, right? Um, and um, that certainly contributed to his reason for bidding his diamond suit. I have a heart that could grow up if they continue a heart here. And I win the ace of diamonds. Now, this is the time and place for a cross rough. Lots of spades, right? I'm missing only the king 10 that matter. We have shortage in diamonds where they have eight of them, right? So we're gonna be able to rough all those diamonds. And we have uh, 
they have some clubs, right? We have five ones, so they have seven of them. Guessing it's going to be four three, um, with one of them, the opener maybe even having three clubs. Um, also, there's a chance these clubs will grow up. If it happens quickly, if we see the king and queen quickly, we might want to switch to playing outer trump and playing outer clubs. But the way to go the, about this right now is to play this thing as a cross rough. Now, a cross rough uses your trump individually. When you pull trump, you're using two at a time. If you can cross rough, right, then you are scoring extra tricks. For instance, if I said I had five spade tricks in my hand here, which isn't necessarily true, if I said I had five, right, um, and I pull a trump, that's all I would get. If I play five spades, I would only get five spade tricks. But if I cross rough, I can score my five spades and the spades in the dummy, right? And now we're up to nine spades. And this is what we want to do. We want to play a cross rough here. Important technique, though, is to play off your top winners first, right? Um, so what you want to do is cash them out immediately. And I also want to start probably with the clubs here. Look at the queen king. That was interesting. Um, and now I start the cross rough. Looking for the king of clubs, right? Which I su suspect is over here. Right? And they both followed to the first one. Play a diamond here. Play another one. Each, as each trump scores individually, our total trick count just skyrockets. Diamond. We score that one, and that looks to be, might be our last diamond. The queen is now good, by the way. Uh, but for the fact that it'll probably get roughed. But we'll try it if, uh, since, uh, well, let's see what happens. Yeah. So he comes in with the queen. Now we can throw our loser in hearts. Now we have ace, queen, jack, eight. Um, and he leads, what he should lead, obviously, is another spade. Now if they'd started off with a spade, uh, that would be one cross rough I wouldn't have gotten. Um, lead a heart, I can rough that. Pull a spade. When you cross rough, generally at the end of the hand, someone's going to have a spade left, right? And that's what happens here. So, making 10, making my contract, but um, never should have been there. And 3 plus 1 was a top score anyways, right? I've always said that game game bonuses don't matter that much in, 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 in match points, unless everybody's in game and they matter. So here, cross rough is the technique. Kind of see it in the auction, right? When partner bid a diamond and they were bidding clubs, you can kind of start to see, oh, this could be a cross rough. Now, if you're the defender and you can see a cross rough coming, and if this was blinding as a cross rough, you lead a trump. The problem being, South had no trump to lead. All right. All right, so we get to board seven. Um, this hand involves a reverse. And the technique that I, the the uh, the gadget that I want to discuss is is a fairly simple, straightforward idea, which is um, I'm going to pass here, which is uh, I, I'm going to show you, and I suggest you do some research and you learn how to play it um, because it's the best way to handle the situation. So here, of course, I'm bidding the ambiguous major. Uh, could be all the rest of the spades in the deck. Could be all the rest of the pay, points in the deck and my partner reverses. Now, a reverse is when you voluntarily go to the two level, you voluntarily go up a level into a suit in which you have shorter number of cards. So this promises five, four, and because to support, and it demands one and forcing. And because you're forcing me to bid again, it's gonna be at the three level, and that's why you need to have extra points. Um, I've come across people who say we don't play reverses, and that's nonsense. Um, if you go to the two, the two level here and force your partner to the three level, you better have extra points. Right? Now, how to respond? And that's what I wanted to point out on this hand. Uh, what you do is you need a red flag. Right? This is the two hearts does not force you to game; it forces you to bid for one round. So it's a good invitational hand, or better. Now, if it's better, right? If it's a maximum hand, then we should be in game just because I opened my mouth. A maximum hand and minimum hand should be in game. Right? If it's an invitational hand though, then my partner really needs to know if I have a, if I have a crappy hand. 
right? You need a way to say, hey, I only have six points, seven points, right? I have a really bad hand. And if you're just invitational, we probably don't want to be in game, okay? So we need a red flag. And in Ingberman, which is what we're playing, I-N-G-B-E-R-M-A-N, no relation to Chris, um, we, um, we need a red flag. And the red flag is this. You bid the cheaper of two no trump or the fourth suit, fourth suit here being clubs. So the cheaper one is two no trump. So if I bid two no trump here, I'm saying, partner, bad hand, bad hand. Right? If I bid anything else, two spades, shows an extra spade, right? but forcing the three no trump. Anything else is a game for us. So here, because I have 11 points, right? everybody is going to be a game in this hand. Um, I can bid three clubs, which the robot plays as an artificial force, which is fine. Um, when he bids diamonds, I suspect this hand is 6-4 uh, in the red suits. Uh, he's glad I've got the spades covered. If he had the clubs covered, he probably bids three no trumps, so he doesn't. But I certainly my ace-10 fourth is a good enough stopper to try three no trump here. And that's how we get there. So, Ing Berman... Learn that method of throwing up a red flag when your partner reverses to say, partner, unless you have maximum points, don't go to game, right? You need to be really careful here. I've got a crappy hand. Okay, so it comes down with the 6-4, and as we thought, nothing in clubs. Um, if the diamonds behave, we have six diamonds. We have the ace of clubs for seven. We have the ace of hearts for eight, and we have two spades for nine and ten. Now we should not be satisfied with ten tricks. Okay, everybody's in game, and all that matters is who can get the most points. The chances of us going down are nothing. There is no chance of us going down. Why? Because this is a if this is a link lead, it's four 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 one. They get three clubs, and I can take the reverse if they if off they get five. Right? So be aggressive when everybody's in game and you got chances to make extra points. You don't even need to duck this first club. And I saw somebody buck, duck clubs a couple times. No need to do that. I'm going to duck clubs one time because if the queen of hearts is on, that's 11 tricks. And maybe I can, um, if the hearts are being guarded by West, and he also has to guard the clubs, uh, maybe I could set up a, a squeeze with the 10 of clubs being a threat to win a trick if this guy has to throw away clubs. Or, the, or a fourth, right, the fourth heart becoming a trick. In other words, if the Queen of Hearts wins, Ace of Heart wins, right, and then West has to guard Hearts, then maybe I can get a heart trick. This is not, this is just a way to do it. Now, if I'm trying for 12 tricks, which I am here, now I will duck once, but I'm only doing that um, to give myself a shot at a squeeze. Um, trying to squeeze a 12 trick. And this, this is what I'm talking about in terms of being very aggressive when um, you are playing match points. So here, let's take the heart finesse. There's queen. King is here, right? King is here. So um, now, we, now we can start whittling down um, their winners. And what, we can, what we're going to do is we're going to save the ace-10 here, or save the 10 here at the end. Um, we don't need to see, save any spades. Uh, we want to save one heart, right? Because there's a chance we can score a link trick in hearts. So uh, we start uh, throwing away cards that don't matter. That includes all the spades, so we'll throw those. There goes the jack of diamonds. So everything else is good, which we knew that from the numbers. Pitch that. And I only need one heart, right? If, if I have a chance to score a link a heart trick here, right? I just need one heart here so I can pitch a heart. So far I haven't seen any extra hearts come down, right? And uh, we'll see what happens. I can play to the ace of spades. Still no hearts, still no clubs. There's the queen, the king of clubs is still out there. The king of clubs is here. Um, finally we see a heart. Um, and uh, since the king of clubs is out, my club is no good. So might as well try to see if the hearts are going to work out. There's the king. There's a heart. Another heart. And they 
did not work. Why? Because West didn't need to guard, guard the hearts. And he was able to keep a club. All right, so I gave my shot a chance at 12 tricks. I took the heart finesse to get myself a chance at 11 tricks. And I took all my chances, right? Took all my chances in a match point game. So this was as good as I should do, 3.2. Now, the reason the squeeze doesn't work is because this guy's guarding spades. He's got four of them over here instead of four here. So give yourself some chances and learn how to make that, learn Ingberman as a way to respond to your partner's reverse. Really important uh, gadget to have, okay? And not that hard. All right, take care.